Hey everyone, it's Schmuckles. Don't mind my hair, I just got out of a work shift. We have more Stranger Things for Dead by Daylight news to bring to you today. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you want to be up to date with all of the news in this situation. There's brand new news that actually came out for the Stranger Things return to Dead by Daylight rumors that are circulating around right now. And I actually discovered a lot of this stuff on my live stream and it's kind of having a live reaction to that over on Twitch. So first things first, Dweet actually said today that now the Hawkins Laboratory has passed a QA, which means a lot more for possibly having it return to Dead by Daylight. Daylight. People asked Dweet, what is a QA and why is that so convincing? And Dweet said, it's quality assurance. It's one of the later stages that content goes through slash is tested to ensure that everything works right before live servers. So it does seem like Behavior had put Hawkins National Laboratory through QA, meaning that it's coming to live servers soon. Someone also said, I'm so happy chapter 30 is Vecna. And Dweet said, well, I wouldn't say that. Fast forward to later in the day, a reliable Fortnite leaker kind of solidified the Stranger Things in Fortnite leaks. These are the in-game files and assets of 11 coming to Fortnite. So there's still nothing official announced by Epic Games in Fortnite, but this leaker has shown us the assets and what it's going to look like in Fortnite. And then after that leak came out, Dweet said Behavior has just disabled the Hawkins Laboratory from the QA build. It is still in the dev build alongside re-enabling the characters for purchase and viewing in store by non-owners. Most likely meaning it is still being worked on or not meant to be seen yet, all in due time. So there's two things here that I was kind of confused about and I got some clarification for. One is that Hawkins Laboratory has been disabled from the QA build. I wasn't quite sure what that meant or what that implied. And the second part is that the dev build also re-enabled characters for purchase and viewing in the store by non-owners. So this picture is a picture of the game files and actually what the game files look like for this dev build. In the green is actually the new stuff for what it looks like right now. In the red is what it used to look like. So it looks like it's saying right here in the green, meaning what's in the dev build right now that you can actually buy Nancy Wheeler, the camper in the, in the survivor game files for a price of 500 or excels. Down at the bottom where it says purchasable, it used to say false, now it says true. So this is the reason that Dweet said that the dev build has re-enabled the characters for purchase. That is kind of crazy news actually, if that's actually happening behind the scenes or this dev build is not something that's a troll somehow in any way, shape or form. And I wanted to get an answer to that question, so I actually asked Dweet. I said, honest question for Dweet, would you say that these two factors further support the return of Stranger Things in DBD? Or is disabling Hawkins more of a red flag? And Dweet responded and said, not a red flag in my opinion, seems more like it was talked about, so they went to hide it. Of course, nothing is 100%, but I'm personally confident in it. So I think what Dweet is saying here is that the Hawkins National Laboratory this morning, it was discovered in the dev build that it was enabled from the QA build. This was something that was leaked and it was going all over the Dead by Daylight Twitter. During the workday today, it seems that Behavior has disabled Hawkins National Laboratory from that QA build, because that's kind of a telltale sign that it's going to be coming into live servers. So Behavior might have actually done this to hide the fact that it's enabled in the QA build, meaning that Disabling Hawkins Laboratory from the QA build is actually a reaction from behavior in a response to the leaks. That is the story that I think the leaking community is thinking is happening right now. Yeah, I even asked Dweet about the screenshot because I was like, well, like, where is this screenshot come from? Is this from like a random screenshot? Is this a screenshot that you personally got yourself? So I asked Dweet also, where exactly is the screenshot from? Was it sent to you? Is it something that you could fully vouch for? And Dweet said fully vouch for. And actually, to me, this is coming from a data miner who's leaked things and been very credible in the past. So saying fully vouch for is actually enough for me to fully be behind this screenshot as an actual leak. I'm not entirely sure where Dweet got the screenshot, but this is something that Dweet, a reliable, credible leaker, vouches for, which is very exciting and making people think that Stranger Things could actually be returning to Dead by Daylight. Again, I want to reiterate this as many times as possible. Every step along the way that we have to figuring out if this is actually returning needs to be taken with a grain of salt. Take every step along the way with a grain of salt until Behavior Interactive or Netflix fully confirms that this is actually happening. It's seeming right now that Behavior is on the track to announcing this new content coming back into the game. When talking about disabling and enabling Hawkins National Laboratory in the QA build, people were wondering like, does this mean it's an accident? Like they accidentally enabled it and then they're like, oh shoot, we accidentally enabled that and then disabled it. Dweet clearly said here, not an accident. You can't push these things by accident. So all of the activity in this dev build, Hawkins National Laboratory being enabled and then being disabled after the leaks came out. These are all decisions made by behavior that were likely not an accident. It's seeming like they're very likely in response to the leaks from this morning. But wait a minute, on May 19th of this year on the slasher radio interview matthew cote said he hasn't had any contact with netflix so does that mean that stranger things is returning to fortnite and maybe not dead by daylight if these leaks are somehow not true i tweeted about this and i said do any fortnite leakers have a timeline of exactly when netflix had the initial contact with fortnite over the return of stranger things third party licensing the dead by daylight community is wondering about stranger things returning to dbd and i tagged the major players involved with the fortnite leaks community as well as dweet and leaks dbd these are all reliable sources and i was looking to see if i could get any 
kind of response and it seemed like some data miners actually had some insight into this entire situation. Pretty much with this question, I was wondering if we could form a timeline of when Netflix reached out to Fortnite. And if that date was after May 19th of this year, it seems possible that Netflix could have also reached out to Behavior to bring back the content into Dead by Daylight. Like if we can form a timeline that makes logical sense here, then everything sort of checks out. Someone said, I'm 90% sure that most leakers don't have info like that due to us getting all of our info from the files. Very rarely do insiders tell us exact timeframes of when they got a license. And from what I recall, I don't remember a time with that ever even happening. And actually this Fortnite leaking source with 240,000 followers on Twitter said this, usually takes around a year from the first contact to the final product. We had no idea this was coming. So it's kind of an interesting timeline. It seems like there's a lot of speculation involved in a guess like that. Like they don't know exactly when this occurred. And if that did actually happen a year ago for Netflix and Fortnite, that's kind of confusing. And anyways, we move on to a really big part of this video too. The Crow Show on Twitter said, I get that leaks are a part of any industry, but I feel bad for behavior devs who have been working on X license for maybe years and gets their work leaked. Kind of deflates the excitement. I follow some leakers because they post other great content. All love. And then Eric Pope, the community director at Behavior Interactive responded to this. I wish leakers cared about the effect it has on people's morale. I understand that they usually do it because they love the games they leak, but I wish they'd stop and consider the effects it has on those who make the things they love. Eric Pope here is talking in very general terms. He's not outright confirming any of the leaks, but I have to say that the timing of this tweet from Eric Pope is very suspicious because there have not been any major leaks related to chapter 30 in any way, shape, or form. In fact, arguably the only thing that has been leaked in the most recent past is the Hawkins National Laboratory being enabled in the QA build. So if Eric Pope is talking about how leaks have an effect on people's morale, he could be directly referencing the fact that Stranger Things is in fact returning to Dead by Daylight, and the fact that this information has sort of gotten leaked is really bad for morale and behavior. Eric Pope is not explicitly saying that, and it's totally possible that that's not what he's talking about, but I find it really suspicious that he is saying that right now. Like these leaks just came out today and this is actually a trending topic on dbd twitter today so it's really suspicious for a dev to come out and outright say that given what happened today with stranger things like i said he's not making any direct references here he's not actually leaking anything here but just the timing of this is very crazy so it's seeming more and more possible and more and more likely that stranger things would be returning to dead by daylight but this is not something that's confirmed we think it's probably most likely that matthew cote was either bluffing or netflix reached out to behavior after this date may 19 2023 if matthew cote was being honest in that interview, I feel it's very unlikely that Vecna is chapter 30. There wouldn't be enough time to develop a character model, develop a killer power, and play test it. So I think that chapter 30 is probably a different license. I don't know how long it takes to like model a character model though. Like it's entirely possible that sometime in the near future Hawkins National Laboratory comes back into the game. Steve, Nancy, and Jonathan along with possibly some other survivor skins come in as well. Because here's the thing, Fortnite is getting new characters in their game, Eleven, and Steve Harrington has been leaked though I haven't seen any assets for that. But there were assets for Eleven, so Fortnite is bringing in new Stranger Things characters along with the old content. So this makes me think would they do the same thing with Dead by Daylight if they're actually returning it to Dead by Daylight. Like if Stranger Things is returning into Dead by Daylight and they're not bringing in a Vecna chapter right now, would they try to bring in new skins along with the old characters? Robin Buckley, Eddie Munson, Jim Hopper, and Joyce Byers seem like really good candidates for skins. Anyways, this all happened today while I was live on Twitch. It was absolutely crazy. It's kind of overwhelming actually how much news has piled up for Stranger Things in just the past 24 hours. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel with notifications on if you want to be up to date with all of the new Stranger Things info and leaks that come out in the next few days. I'll definitely post more videos if there's any new info about the situation. Remember to take each step of this situation with a grain of salt. Anyways, that does it for this video. Goodbye.